Hello everyone, I'm Anne Burrows, the President and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum, and I bring greetings from all of us at Janum. What a privilege it's been to travel with you on this exciting and inspiring pilgrimage. Kudos to the Tadaima team. You've shown us the way and we're so grateful. I'm also the chair of the Japanese American Confinement Sites Consortium. The JAXA Consortium is made up of organizations who are committed to preserving the history of the World War II experiences of Japanese Americans, the sites, the artifacts, and the stories. We're also deeply committed to elevating the related social justice lessons that remain so relevant today. Our members include the 10 War Relocation Authority confinement sites, as well as historical organizations endowments, museums, commissions, and educational institutions. You will have heard from many of these organizations during Tadaima. Over the last nine weeks, we've traveled on this profoundly moving journey to learn about the important history and the wider context of the wartime incarceration. That journey of learning is never over. And I would like, therefore, to invite you to take the next step and to join us for our JAX Consortium Virtual Educational Conference, which is scheduled for October 17th and 18th. Stay tuned for more information. Without further ado, please enjoy the Tadaima closing ceremony and thank you for joining us. Uh, 
Um, so we are so grateful for your time and your energy and that was captivating. Just nice like, meeting you, Fujiko. Nice okay. to meet you. Good to be with you. Great to be with you. Art world and the world in general has evolved um, and kind of in terms of how, how we're looking at dance. Richard Yada says hello from Arkansas. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. He's a great guy. For the Empress, I'm a historian, so I like to do things as historically accurately as possible. So I have procured a old-fashioned rotary theater for this part of this. Well, this smells so good. That look? Good, huh? John did not get the memo about wearing a white shirt for Class Picture Day, because that's him in the dark shirt and bolo tie. It's here that he makes two lifelong friends, Roy Kumasaka and Frank Ashida. It was a, a terrible time in our lives, but the, 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 for teenagers like us, one of the things that was good about camp was we, I was just getting interested in girls. So there are lots of girls. And my mom was nine. Okay. So um, they, they were little. Uh, my, for my mom, uh, she remembers crying. She says she remembers crying the first night and, and keeping everybody in the barracks awake because she was crying. Um, and even incarcerated behind barbed wires, they never forgot that dream. I don't think they ever lost confidence in the principles of America. And they pass that on to us in our daily lives. When you suppress or oppress any group of people, you are really interrogating, interrogating the rights of all people. There's suffering or pain unfairly imposed upon anyone. It's my duty, it's your duty. Try to alleviate it because that's the way we gain a better life for all of us. So this ability to work with our volunteers through Zoom and other StreamYard and other chats has actually allowed us to learn so much more about them. So we're so great. Well, we're not grateful that COVID-19 happened, but that is the silver lining. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope people enjoy the stories. Uh, these are, you know, very important because these stories really, as you say, uh, tell us who we are. I'm so thrilled to be able to perform and present for this Nikkei Black Party. Also want to shout you all out. Thank you, um, wherever you are tuning in from, for tuning in, for joining the movement. Uh, via live stream, and I hope that you all will continue to keep in touch even beyond this virtual space. Hello again, I'm David Ono. And I'm Tamlin Tamita. We are back at the Japanese American National Museum because, unfortunately, we have come to the end of Tadaima, a community virtual pilgrimage. We hope that you have all enjoyed this nine-week celebration and that it has helped you feel more connected with our Nikkei community through these extraordinary times. Altogether, nearly 100,000 viewers have tuned in with large populations centered in Hawaii, the West Coast, and the Northeast. Others have participated from as far away as Japan, Brazil, Australia, the United Kingdom. But regardless of where we are, we hope that all Nikkei feel inspired to tell their story. Overall, the virtual pilgrimage has been an incredible feat, bringing together more than 350 programs from 65 organizations in just a matter of weeks. We've heard from scholars and camp survivors, enjoyed live performances, taken virtual tours, and made gardens inspired by archaeology. There is so much of this history to learn about, and now we have even more materials to guide all of us. The vast majority of these programs will remain on the Japanese American American Memorial Pilgrimage website for you to return to. So even though this event has come to a close, the spirit of Tadaima can still live on. I thought the virtual pilgrimage was fantastic and it was a great opportunity to bring the Japanese American community together. The depth and the range of the programming really extended beyond my wildest beliefs. But I think our unique circumstances of sheltering in place and being isolated allowed all of the community to come together 
and unite during this important period of time. Uh, for someone like me who lives in uh, Sydney, Australia, uh, Tadaima was one of the best things that happened as a result of the uh, COVID restrictions. I was able to meet other artists from Canada and the United States and understand that uh, we engage in similar issues and sentiments. The Nikkei diaspora exists in the world. When you guys first proposed this idea of an online virtual pilgrimage, I thought you were nuts. How on earth were you going to fill eight or nine weeks of programming? Uh, uh, but you did, and it's been uh, thoughtful and uh, creative, uh, comprehensive, covering the arc of the camp experience and start to finish. And you've created a national audience where none existed before. What I'm thankful for about the Tadaima virtual pilgrimage is it's finally made me realize that the story of internment, redress, and reparations is my family's story. Being from Hawaii, I felt a little detached from the experience because we did not have internment here, my family wasn't interned, but now hearing the words of people, seeing the faces of people I know, and even being a part of the program has made me feel it's my family's story. It's in our blood too. So thank you very much. Tadaima has not just been a substitute for the pilgrimage experience. It's been an incredible way to learn more about the resources, values, stories, and places that preserve Japanese American history. I am glad to explore my own Nikkei heritage, learn from it, be inspired by it, have enjoyed learning more American history and discovering how many stories intertwine. I had been to uh, Minidoka and Tule Lake pilgrimages uh, in the past uh, personally, but uh, knowing about these other camps and what happened there was very interesting to me. It was really fun and uh, connecting when my mom, dad, and I, and my family, my daughters, um, could watch the elder panel for Minidoka. And it was just like we were at the pilgrimage. To me, the uh, Tadaima has been like a, a family reunion for us, but also the larger picture was learning so much about other people's family stories. So I really appreciate Tadaima. I would like to send a warm hug to all those involved in this year's Tadaima, especially Tomoko, who encouraged me to talk about the Nikkei Australian internment. The Tadaima program showed us various ways of collecting and preserving Nikkei voices. I would like to reassess how I could continue doing so. I think Tadaima has meant a lot for me in terms of helping me feel closer to the Japanese American community. It's been really nice to meet and learn about different Japanese Americans all around the country and in different parts of the globe and to see just the various aspects of different professions of art and activism that Japanese Americans have been involved in. Um, I think it's been really cool and really inspiring for me. So I'm really grateful for all the programming in Tadaima and for the opportunity to meet so many different people. Hello, this is Miki Ebara in Tokyo. On behalf of NHK World, I would like to say thank you so very much for letting us be a part of this great endeavor. I learned a lot from the discussions and films that I watched, and I sincerely hope that in the near future, more Japanese people can participate in similar events like this to be able to get to know you better and to say tadaima and okaeri to each other. Until then, please take care of yourself and congratulations. My attempt at poetry. In this summer of isolation, we connected with each other around the country from other countries. Films, videos, live streams, at a single source, multiple means to never forget. Tadaima, we came home, all together at one tenacious and forever place. Thank you, everybody. Show.
Despite the hardships of the camps, the incarcerees did their best to cope with their situation and look out for one another. They built gardens to beautify their surroundings, made furnishings to bring comfort to their barracks, and organized team sports and cultural events to raise morale. But despite these group efforts, the incarceration nonetheless fractured the community. The Issei, who had been the heads of their families and were venerated by the younger generations, were suddenly swept aside when camp authorities favored the American-born Nisei for leadership roles. Parents who were accustomed to running their own homes now struggled to oversee their children in the communal style living. The loyalty questionnaire caused ideological conflicts as each person responded in their own way to the injustices forced upon them. Many wanted to prove their loyalty to the U.S. through community or military service. Some expressed their sentiments through their right to protest. Others chose whatever path they thought would keep their families together. The cultural and psychological impacts of the incarceration cut deep into the community, lasting well after the war. Even after most camp survivors returned to the West Coast, the physical landscape of their neighborhoods could never return to their original form. The U.S. government had seen the incarceration as an opportunity to disperse the Nikkei community. In the aftermath of the loyalty questionnaire, the War Relocation Authority encouraged resettlement across the country. The intention was to break up the pre-war Japantowns. As Japanese Americans integrated more into white mainstream society, most of these historic Japan towns faded over time. Only a few remain today. Much like the camps, these Japan towns, also known as Nihon Machi, are important to our history. But while the camps served to suppress Japanese identity, these sites help preserve our ethnic heritage. They reunite us, provide us with a sense of belonging and a special place to call our own. The war ended, and like other Japanese Americans, my family was released from barbed wire imprisonment. But where were we to go? Our home was gone, business gone, everything gone. We were impoverished, but we were determined to build back our lives. We returned to our place of memories. We came back to Los Angeles. Our first home was a Skid Row hotel room not far from Little Tokyo. It was there that my father opened an employment office to assist other returnees desperate to find jobs. The bond of community had been strengthened by adversity, and our indomitable spirit was to reconstruct our old Japan town, Little Tokyo. The incarceration shattered the Japanese-American economy. Decades of accumulated wealth and property were lost. But our built heritage was still intact. The churches, the temples, and the old familiar buildings had been waiting our return. 
we were resolute about bringing new life and vitality back to our time-honored structures and rebuild our Japantown, Little Tokyo. Over the years, the few remaining Japantowns have shrunk to a vestige of what they once were. Now, the coronavirus pandemic looms as a grotesque threat. Fear literally permeates the air. People are unemployed. Residents face eviction. Businesses barely tread water. Our community is working hard to preserve our Japan towns and to protect the people who have built their lives there. Social workers are helping businesses launch new delivery services. Representatives are lobbying for affordable housing. Others are organizing funds to purchase property. Artists have arranged events to promote community engagement, and local councils have established historical markers to ensure that our cultural heritage is not forgotten. The grit and spirit of our community has become galvanized. Little Tokyo holds a special meaning for me because that's where I grew up, but all of the Japan towns are important to the wider community. Whether we live there or not, these places are home to us. Places where we can celebrate who we are and honor those who came before us. They are places of memory and belonging. Locations both Japanese and American. Some place completely, uniquely us. We spent this summer honoring our history, and we will continue to do so for many years to come. But for now, we must look to the future. What is the future of the Nikkei community? Well, the answer to that lies with our youngest generations. Having grown up in the digital age, young people are experts at online communication and information sharing. They can make Japanese American history more accessible than ever. And they have already begun to revolutionize the way we tell these stories. Their social media skills also give them a unique ability to mobilize for change despite the physical distance between us. At the same time, young people are coming of age during a climate crisis. They're navigating a complicated voting process while confronting the rise of extremist politics. 
They're balancing a significant amount of debt with their first car, their first job, and their first apartment. There's a lot at stake for them, and they may not have the knowledge or the resources to manage it all. But this is where we can all step up to help. We can make sure that incoming generations have the tools that they need to continue our work and to fight for the causes that matter most to them. For many of them, the fight against racism is as crucial as ever. Asian Americans have seen a surge in hate crimes due to the spread of COVID-19, while Native American populations are facing some of the worst rates of infection. And given that many aspects of our lives are now on hold, we could no longer turn a blind eye to the murder of black Americans. By now, we have witnessed over two and a half months of continuous protests with Black Lives Matter demonstrations in every state and U.S. territory. This may be the largest American civil rights movement since the 1960s. As a community, we have deeply felt the impacts of racism. We also know firsthand the importance of an ally who takes a stand for us. Now we have the chance to do the same. Although we spent the summer focusing on Japanese American history, our history is closely intertwined with many others. For example, the African American Civil Rights Movement secured protections for Asian American voters. It ended the bans on immigration and interracial marriage. It also influenced our own redress movement as well as the Asian American movement in the decades following. Likewise, there are many issues today that resonate with the Nikkei experience of World War II. One might consider topics like racial profiling, family detention, prison labor, voting barriers, reparations, and intergenerational trauma. By understanding our history as Japanese Americans, we have the opportunity to validate and accentuate the concerns of many other minority groups. As it says on the memorial at Bainbridge Island, Nidoko Nainini, let it not happen again. So what can we do to take action? While protesting is a vital part of racial justice work, it might not be the most accessible option depending on one's age or ability. What we can do is educate ourselves by listening to other people's stories and by learning more about our role in the discussion of race. For example, where does the concept of model minority come from? What kind of impact has it had on Asian Americans? The next step is to communicate. By contacting our representatives and by having open discussions with those who are close to us, even of people of color, we can still hold biases about other groups. So it's important that we talk to our friends and family about why we have those views. In our professional lives, we can use any status we might have to make sure that other voices are being heard. And finally, we can make a tangible commitment. We can commit to voting and volunteer work. We can donate to local organizations or support small businesses. We might even challenge our institutions to address what sort of changes that they have planned. Of course, there are plenty of people in the community who have devoted their entire lives to this work. But this year's protests have reminded us that we will need everyone's active participation if we want to address our nation's long history of racial injustice. This movement may also remind us of how interconnected we are and how important it is for people to feel safe in their community. Hello everyone. George Takei said in the opening ceremony, our story is an American story. My father always emphasized that point as well. I encourage this current Nikkei generation to understand the lessons of our own history and share them across communities. Learn the long history of prejudice and fear other ethnicities have had to endure in this country. Let's stop repeating history. My charge to all of you is to ramp up the activism, even remotely. My friend, Congressman John Lewis said, continue the march. Find the courage to make significant change and fight the prevalent harassment and violence. Commit to be civically engaged, confront bias, work together to stop racism. Continue the conversation, fill out the census and vote. We all need to uphold our democracy. That is what drives me to promote Fred Korematsu Day of Civil Liberties and the Constitution every January 30th. Remember my father's words, stand up for what is right. And when you see something wrong, don't be afraid to speak up. When people are underrepresented, they're often misrepresented. And it's easier to paint a certain group in a negative light. False narratives arise, propaganda. It's easier to put a certain group in an internment camp. That's why it's so 
important that no matter which avenue we pursue, whether it's business or politics or arts, that we stay engaged and we support the community and we take back control of that narrative and we advocate the same for others because only then will there be true representation. And then we'll realize that we're all the same. We all have the same hopes and dreams and fears and we're all in this together. And hopefully that fosters that love and compassion that the world so desperately needs today. In this time when the government, the leadership is trying very hard to divide our country, it is so important that we have a voice. So thank you, Tadaima, for having artists be a part of this story that you created, for giving us a place, a voice. We have never needed it more than we need it now so that we can help to use our experiences to grow a more just and equal world for everyone. I want to encourage all of you to express your creativity, speak your truth, uh, do what you can to actively retain all the cultural practices that we have held onto by a thread sometimes. Uh, be informed about your Japanese American history and uh, use all of that to stand with other communities who are being targeted today. Many blessings to you and hope that you will follow your bliss. Now, not everyone can run for public office, but everyone can be part of public service. And everyone has this ability to pursue their own career or professional goals uh, and at the same time, say to your mayor, to your county executive, to your governor, to the president of the United States, you know, I'm a subject matter expert and I would like to serve on a board or a commission. And this way you're gonna be doing something far greater than self. You're gonna be doing something for others in this way you will be at the table representing all of us when matters come up that are very important to us, uh, not only individually, but collectively. And so you'll have a chance to speak up and, and be represented. And the reason this is important is because, you know, this whole Civil Liberties Act of 1988 was to make sure that something like this never ever happened again to somebody else. And yet on 9-11, there were people saying, hey, keep Middle Easterners off airplanes, keep Muslims off airplanes. Uh, and they were doing things to, and even some talk about rounding up Middle Easterners and so when you think, can it ever happen again? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it really can. So it is important that you participate. And I think also the uh, beauty of Black Lives Matter is that it has raised the consciousness level of everybody about race relations. And so in order to make sure that we all are participating to have a more perfect union and so that we are all able to make sure that justice is applied equally and that our constitutional uh, protections are indeed um, important. We don't have to be vigilantes, but we do have to be vigilant in the protection of our constitutional advantages that we have in this great country. So again, to Kimiko and Hanako, congratulations for this wonderful program that you've had. Thank you very much for everyone who's had a part in putting this series together 
and for also listening in on the whole nine week series. Thank you very much and stay in good health and stay strong and safe during this uh, tumultuous period of the shelter in place. Tadayama was chosen as the name of the virtual pilgrimage because it captures the situation we all find ourselves in. We were quite literally at home for the duration of the pilgrimage, but for every Tadaima, there is an Okairi, which means welcome home. Although today marks the end of the virtual pilgrimage, Okairi can be the theme that carries us forward, a theme of making sure that everyone feels safe and welcome in our community. Standing in solidarity with other communities is important in its own right, but we must also remember that communities overlap. Our community comes together as Nikkei, but we have many other identities too. This is particularly true of young people in our community. Every new generation is more diverse than the previous, creating a wonderful blend of cultural traditions and new perspectives. That diversity is what gives them the ingenuity, the compassion, and the fearlessness to tackle the issues of today. There is no doubt that they will continue a remarkable Nikkei legacy of advocating for others. And we feel certain that they will continue to preserve the places and the stories that are so meaningful to all of us as a community. But don't take our word for it. We would like to introduce a young poet who has a very special message for all of us. At just 17 years old, Kara Chu is an accomplished athlete, writer, and student leader. From documenting Japanese American farm history to sharing the legacy of our World War II veterans, she loves playing an active role in the Nikkei community. Here is her poem, Because of You. Because of you, I will follow my dreams. On Angel Island, where your immigrant hopes were treated with cold suspicion, I see your pain etched in your desperate writings on the wood walls which imprisoned you. Your cries echo in my footsteps through the immigration station fenced in by barbed wire. You don't know yet, but I do. History will repeat itself. Because of you, I will never give up. On the farms where you coax strawberries from the barren land, I see the fruits of your labor until you were forcibly relocated. Your dignity smashed into a small suitcase, bringing only what you can carry. You, an American citizen, stripped of your belongings and your rights. Because of you, I will gum on. I will endure. On the bus to Manzanar, where you were wrongfully held, I see the barbed wire fences and guard towers with guns pointed in, not out. Your sunburnt body shields my eyes from the blinding dust storm. You created beauty when there was none. Because of you, I am a global citizen. On the surface, you look like me, but you are a Japanese-Canadian. I see your frozen fingers pull beats in forced labor camps. Your painful experience like those in Peru and Australia is so much like ours. You survived racism and propaganda despised in your own country. Because of you, I am firm in my convictions. On the loyalty questionnaire, you were forced to answer questions 27 and 28. Will you fight for your country that imprisoned you or a foreign country you've never seen? I see the heartbreak as siblings face off against each other in war. Your bravery inspires me no matter your answer. You remain courageous and loyal in camp, court, and in battle. Because of you, I go for broke. On memorials, I see the names of those who bravely gave their lives. I see the 442nd, the most decorated unit in history, change minds and open hearts. You're my hero. You fought for us and now I fight to share your legacy. You fought the enemy abroad and the prejudice at home and you won. Because of you, I have a community to turn to. On the train to a new city like Chicago or back west upon your release, I see the hostility driving a diaspora across America. Your resilience shows in the storefronts throughout Little Tokyo. You rebuilt your lives against all odds and made ours better too. Because of you, I will stand tall and speak up. On the campaign for redress demanding an apology, I see you righting a grave wrong with the Civil Liberties Act. Your spirit is in my soul, propelling me to be a force for social justice. You have showed us the way, now we Nikkei are linking arms to support others who are oppressed. Because of you, I am proud to be me. On this virtual pilgrimage, I am at home. Your shared experiences and stories resonate with me. I have found community here. Itakimasu! You will be here when I return to listen and learn again. Thank you. Okage-sama-de!
Because of you, I am. The time has come to say goodbye. Even though the virtual pilgrimage has come to a close, the majority of the content will be available on the website for you all to enjoy. At this time, we still don't know how much longer the conditions of the pandemic will last. However, if you are ever missing our community connection, the virtual pilgrimage is a place you can all return to. There might even be additional programming in the future. So join us at the Tadaima Facebook group to stay updated on new developments. For now, at least, you can learn how to properly store your family heirlooms, mm -hmm. record oral histories with your loved ones, and reflect on what you've learned through creative writing prompts. We encourage you to contribute to the Tadaima Community Archive, which collects photos, artifacts, writings, and memories. Every story matters in the greater collective, and we hope that you feel inspired to be conservationists in this very important history. On behalf of the planning committee, we would like to thank our partners for generously providing the time and the resources to create such wonderful programs. It has been a pleasure working with all of you and exploring new possibilities in digital programming. The planning committee would also like to say thank you, arigato, to our viewers for your thoughtfulness and support. We are especially appreciative of our elders for sharing their experiences with all of us. And we look forward to the day we can all come together again. Until then, stay safe and gambatte.